Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the computational thinking room. Um, I believe this is the gray group. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. So when we face a complex problem, we use this computational thinking to understand the problem and to de design solutions. While these students are working, they are going to be thinking about the problem that they have and also be thinking about the way that they think and the way that they can solve the problem. This kind of work develops creativity, flexibility, persistence, and reasoning. Um, and these are the STEM and STEAM um, projects that we like to talk about a lot. Um, and there are, within the scope of, of curriculum, there are a lot of open-ended projects. There are design projects, and everything is really, really hands-on. And in this video, the first toddler uses a perceived pattern to place cylinders into sockets. When something doesn't work, she self-corrects. The second toddler follows a complex sequence of steps to successfully put his nap supplies away. students they are gonna show you how they they how they're gonna use a Kubeto program a Kubeto robot to program a path a chosen path and they might have to debug in the on the way or not and 
at the same time, we're gonna use the our familiar Nautilus cylinder to show you how we can make pat patterns to make a ma matrix. Jenny, can you go with your cubero to the mountains? Robin, can you show us where is the mountain? In the screen, you also can see that he's trying to match the same size and the same, also the same color <coughs> that we have in our matrix. Thank you, Celia, and this is my sixth year. 
My name is Justin, and I, this is my ninth year class. Tonight we'll be talking about the engineering design process and how we learn this every single year of the week. As fourth years, we build solar panels. As fifth years, we build windows, and this year as seniors, we will be building water filters. <coughs> the engineering design process, or EDP for short, has five simple steps. Ask, imagine, plan, create, and approve. The last two steps, create and improve, can repeat infinitely until you're satisfied. We collaborate and share ideas in small groups, which helps us to be inspired by other people's ideas. We also have to complete, complete our own work, individual work during the year. Each unit starts with the same lesson. Technology in a bag. And the question is, what is technology? The purpose of this lesson is to uh, um, teach the definition of the word technology. So to start, we arrange, the seniors arrange the younger students into different groups and give them a mystery bag containing pieces of technology, like a shoe, a hairbrush, a staple, or a flashlight, a paper clip, etc. Most new friends think of technology as something that's electronic or computerized, but really technology is anything that helps you solve a problem or makes something easier. After technology in a bag, we start the unit, which takes about five to six weeks to get through. Each unit starts with a story, which gives us an example of each of the five steps and how to solve a specific problem. Leif Catches the Wind is a story for the windmills. He's from Denmark, and the problem is that him and his friend need to figure out how to get more oxygen into the fish tank. They solve this problem by creating and improving a water paddle, which is used to stir the water and create more oxygen. For the first step of the process, we ask questions that help us continue the process. One of our main questions is, how do mechanical engineers observe and think about machines? We learn about what machines are, observe how they work, discuss the pros and cons of them, and we also discuss the roles that mechanical engineers play in making and designing those machines. We learn about how engineers study the properties of machines, how they design them, the definition of machine, and how the function of one machine can affect the others. That is the ask step. The next step is imagine. In this step of the EDP, first we predict what materials will catch the best amount of them. Next, we observe and describe how different objects and shapes catch the wind when they are sails. Then we test unique and individual sail designs by measuring how far the sails flew on a wire when being blown by the wind. Finally, we discuss the properties of the materials used to make sails and think about how durable and useful these materials would be in sale. Okay. For this step of the process, we talk with other people and write down our ideas based on while remembering what we learned about the sale designs. This is the stage where we actually draw and plan out the design of the wind. We think about the best shape blade that would catch the wind and the properties of the material. Like, is the blade bendy, floppy, solid, or stretchy? We also learn that the more we plan, the more ideas can become successful. The last two steps are create and improve. Create and improve is a process that can be repeated infinitely to your design. First is create. As you can see, we have created the windmills based on our drawings and discoveries of materials and what we know about wind. For the sake of time, we have already created two windmills. One that doesn't work so well, and one that does. <laughs> our goal is to demonstrate the work of wind by pulling up pennies on the stone. We know the shape of the blade and the material of the blade matters. We chose rectangles and index cards. And now we'll see what we can do. <laughs> the reason this failed is because the blades are too close to the tower, which is stopping the blades from turning even though that they're catching the wind. And the distribution of the blades around the windmill is uneven, so that makes it possible. Based on our mistakes, let's make it better. We've created this windmill based on what we think we can improve. So how did we improve it? So we made the blades 
smaller and we change the shape to a uh, right angled trapezoid. All our blades are going the same direction and they're evenly distributed now, unlike the other one. We can go back to improve again, thinking about how to make it better to lift even more pennies. The create and improve keeps on going and going until you're satisfied. The engineering design process is a useful skill to have. Well, you can use the same steps to solve problems and figure things out. It's fun to create things, and that helps us build more creative minds. Thank you for listening to our modern presentation. Mm -hmm. called BlocksCAD to build things using mathematical commands. After a lot of practice, we are allowed to design something to 3D print. This program uses four basic shapes. There's a cube, there's a cylinder, there's a sphere, and then there's a torus, which is any shape with a hole inside of it. Using commands, we can stretch, shape, and move these shapes to build things. Todd, could you show us how to turn a cylinder into a cone? Example of a command is translate. Sean can use the x, y, and z axis as well as negative and positive to translate the shapes to different places. So you can see up here that the dashed line is negative and the solid line is positive. The green line is the y axis, so I'm going to move this to a positive 10. You can see the cylinder reappears up here, and I can go back to negative 20. You can see it go back where it was before on the dashed line. Now, I'm going to translate x that's along the red line. Once again, the dashed line is negative and the solid line is positive. The um, final axis you can translate things upon is the z axis. You can, if you, it's the one that moves the shape either up or down. I'm going to translate this by positive 10, and you can see the shape moves up 10 units in the air above the coordinate plane. But let's say I put it at negative 20, then it should be 20 units below the coordinate plane. Mm -hmm. Another command is rotate. She has to tell the program which way to rotate it using the x, y, and z axis. So I want to rotate my cylinder along the x-axis 90 degrees. When I do this, it's going to flip itself like that, Ooh, and so cool. you have a cylinder on the side. Then I want to rotate on the z-axis 45 degrees, and I do that, and it ends up being diagonal to the other shapes. Um, another command is difference. Charlotte will create something and explain if she does it. So I'm going to take my original cylinder, I'll render back to its original position, and I'm going to duplicate these and put them down in the minus section. If I make this cylinder down here the radius at 5 and the height at 7, and Z at 3, you can see a cylinder that's got most of a cutout from it, but part of it still has the bottom. I got rid of Z, which was 3, and put the height, sorry about that, at 10 again, then you can see that I have a hole entirely through my cylinder. We only started using blocks cat about a month ago, but people that are really good at it can create things like this. 
<laughs> in saying this, it was made by someone that um, probably works at Blocks Cat and sort of the example. <laughs> 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 So I also spent some time working on Blocks CAD and made this. Many of you will know the popular slogan, it was never a dress, bathroom symbols, that girls aren't wearing dress dresses, they're actually a superhero with a cape. We're going to work with Blocks CAD for a few minutes and let you watch us play around with the design for each one of While they continue to create, we have a couple minutes where we can take questions if you have them. You did such a good job. Of saying, <laughs> you have no questions. Are there loops in the programming language for the um, block? For which, for which one? Are there loops? Like, can you can you do, can you tell it to do the same set of commands like multiple? Yeah, you can repeat. Yeah. Yeah. So things can move. Can you get things to move? Like if you change the position, you know, over time. Of uh, which? Of uh, which one? You know, you know, like like could you get the cup to like spill over? No, uh, there is an um, coding that allows you to change the position of the entire shape unless you um, put it all into one block and then rendered it again and again, changing the position a little bit each time. But other than that, you can't create blocks that allow you to move the shape around. Did you say you, you can print it out with the 3D printer? Yeah, uh, I've got special permission from Tech you're allowed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> I hear Tech can sometimes be a bit challenging. Yeah. We normally give permission. <laughs> and you're like, you have to be good. Really. <laughs> so you have to be like working on it and be like, say, yeah, you can do it. Instead of just like a random shape. Um, no, I mean, you've seen it yet, but down, I think, in LA4, Ryan 3D printed one of their um, Blocks Kai creations, and it's really cool, so you might want to look at that and get the chance. Yes. I, I have a question for the um, Upper E kids. How long, Justin and Zila, did it take your groups to make each of those projects? <coughs> that The particular. Sure. Okay, so um, because we already did it, we practiced it uh, right. last year. Uh, this one took a few minutes, <laughs> <laughs> but we already knew like most of the good strategies, so we just continued to do it. And when you were doing it last year, was it over several weeks? Was it a couple days? Mm -hmm. do you, I don't know. That's a long it time ago. It was because we had to use the different steps. Okay. Because when we just made these, we already knew and remembered from last year mm -hmm. which techniques worked well and which didn't. Mm -hmm. So we, last year we used the different steps. We asked about like, how can we do this. We imagined mm -hmm. possible ways we planned. We created a new Each session is about an hour and a half. <clears throat> so over the course of probably two or three sessions, okay. groups got together to build like a prototype. Mm -hmm. And then do you remember you worked together to improve and build it again? 
some groups went further and further and further. Most groups built maybe two, I'd say. Cool. Yeah. I have a question about this tide. So <laughs> this is what I studied in college. I just wonder <laughs> this is what we use that money circle as well. Just wonder whether they try the data by themselves or they really calculate the data. The data for they put in yeah, so how did you guys learn how to use this and how to create No, how to use it. I mean the data they put in or different numbers for the dimensions. They really calculate or they just try and try, try. Because this is about the geometry. Yeah. Right. Yeah, did they learn the geometry first, then they go to this little program or they? Um, no, for the most part. I mean, the first unit in seventh grade is geometry. Um, but no, a lot of this is trial and error and learning okay. like what it looks like and um, yeah, so they do angles and all of that in class, but here they just get to experiment with because we don't do the z-axis at all um, in seventh grade, but this allows them to see it. And okay. so, yeah. Right, like when you guys started doing it, did you... Like what was your what was your strategy for like creating things? Like um, when you did the was the snowman one of the first things you created? Um, we created a couple of different things. I mean, we start by watching videos to give you the basics on how to do it, but then mostly figuring out the placement and which things that work best is trial and error, and a whole lot of guesswork. <laughs> it's usually helpful if you've done um, stuff like this before. I myself do some Scratch, which is a coding program. Because like ages beaten up, there's even like there's 16 year olds, adults, people who create really awesome stuff there. So there's a lot of um, coding stuff that is like this on it, and also it helps. Because I learned a lot about the coordinate planes from Amy and Matt this year, <laughs> so it's very helpful to know that kind of stuff. Blocks, blocks is a great place for creating anything you want. Thank you very much for coming to the competition.